TM. Welcome to another analysis video and in this video I'm going to look at a sparkling recent game that was played over in the, the chess hub of the world at the moment, St. Louis in America. And this is a recent tournament, female only, all play all, top females in the world playing the Khan's Cup. And this is definitely my pick of games from that competition. And in actual fact, probably my pick of games from the last month or two. It's it's a beautiful win by Valentina uh, Ganina with the white pieces. A very charming and lovely person. Has a very infectious smile, as you can see from the photo here. But don't let that disarm you. Her chess is aggressive, is deadly, and she is a very very good tactician as we're going to see here her opponent Maria Sigbag um, from France has been multiple French champion um, and has also starred on a re reality TV program over in France which I, I don't think went too well won't go into details you can probably google it um, but this this was a brilliant game so Valentina with the white pieces came out throwing bullets right from the start in this game. I mean, I think it's great to have these all play alls um, with different people, whether they're females, males. I get a bit sick of seeing the same people play against each other and having draws all the time. And to me, the Khan's Cup in in uh, St. Louis has been a breath of fresh air. The games have been much more exciting, much more high win rates than the elite tournaments. And they're really a more interesting opening, so I'm all up for these kind of tournaments. So well done for St. Louis for holding this one. The game started e4, and we had a Sicilian c5, knight c3, knight f3, and an open Sicilian. Like I said, Valentina, extremely aggressive player, and we now had the Nidorf variation with a6, very popular at top level. And here, Valentina played a rare move. I expect just to avoid. Um, theory really and to get black thinking from an early stage of course there are numerous moves here but the move knight b3 moving the knight away from the center it is certainly a rare rare occurrence here it makes some sense especially if you're playing against a Nidorf player who likes playing the e5 setups rather than the e6 setups for example bishop e2 e5 is a main move Maybe moving the knight away wouldn't make as much sense if black, and this is all to do with preparation before the game, prefers setups with e6 because then why move your knight away from this fantastic square? But anyway, knight b3, um, and here e6 was played. So this is a bit of a logical fight. The pawn does go to e6, and I say this is a, you know, uh, this is maybe not as sensible this knight b3 move now and we actually see black in a very decent position from the opening valentina just goes for it g4 bit like the carer's attack if you know the carer's attack the carer's attack is a variation after e6 here where white plays g4 immediately and actually g4 is one of the reasons why um black doesn't play e6 in the position because you can no longer uh, attack that pawn so it's a bit like that, but the, the two moves, a6 and knight b3, should help black. a6 is a more useful move to expand on the queen side. g4, b5, typical counter-attacking move, king side versus queen side. g5, super aggressive play. I mean, this game, you know, reminds me of my, you know, my mad years of just going forwards, forwards, attack, attack, attack. And this is why I love this game, pure aggression. Knight fd7, bishop g2, bishop b7, very normal moves, and now f4. And again, uh, Valentina just going forwards, forwards, forwards. The knight now comes to c6, so both sides developing, and, and white just continues the pawn storm, h4. But of course, this is very, uh, very uh, <laughs> double edged with the white king still on e1. Because you're pushing all the pawns in front of your king, you may checkmate the black king, but you may also leave your king very exposed because you have no protection. So very double-edged position. And now we had a novelty. Previously, b4 had been played in this position. But I like the way Maria plays the next move, and this is the very standard idea. Knight b6. When you're playing the Sicilian from a black point of view, the black pieces, the c4 square is a key, key square. And I'm sure, as most Sicilian players know, 
you want to try and get a knight to that square where it can harass the white queen side and even harass the center of the board so i like this maneuver moving the knight into this square this is a key concept to remember when playing these lines with black it also kind of stops maybe not stop but it puts white off playing the logical move bishop e3 because the knight of course jumps in so the opening i think has been quite a success for black but it doesn't stop valentina queen g4 in we go with the queen and this is maybe creating ideas of f5 g6 at some point not now but if black has to take with the f-pawn and the queen obviously quite aggressively placed it and black reacts in a good way when your opponent's playing in such an aggressive way you should counter-attack you shouldn't stay stagnant a move like bishop e7 would be a typical mistake in my eyes you're not really going to castle over there are you when there's so many pawns coming at you and it's just a waste of a move it maybe looks like it develops a piece but there's no real reason here time is more important when your opponent's playing aggressively you must counteract quickly time 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 that's why b4 is a good move pushing the knight away and now the next move is fairly logical but i would have now what black played the knight into c4 I mean it's logical but I mean it doesn't actually create any threats here I would have probably preferred the move a5 here again a standard idea in the Sicilian to use these two pawns to harass white's position and this does you know threaten maybe to go a4 creating more space pushing white pieces back and taking a real initiative over on that side of the board anyway knight c4 white castled castling queenside is too risky now that black has developed this initiative and now pawn to a5 and here just c3 trying to get a, a hold on the d4 square and now black plays e5 and, and this is very very normal this is trying to take control of the e5 square if white pushes on with f5 it's not clear what white's going to do next because it's very hard to open a line on the king side whenever you push a pawn black will block up and you don't want to block the area of the board you're trying to attack so white kept things open and this is valentina star and this is you know if you want to be improve your attacking chess um one of the things to bear in mind it is to keep the position as open as you can open up lines open up avenues of attack don't close it down um black could have taken here with a knight not a bad idea but pawn takes is also okay now the bishop can move out and again i think black is absolutely fine here valentina creates the threat now against f7 queen f3 black defends that checkmate idea with the queen and now we have pawn takes pawn knight takes pawn and here white plays knight to c3 and things start to get very aggressive very interesting now i mean if black can get castle somehow then I really like Black's position. Black has the play on the queen side. These two knights very nicely placed. Has the bishop attacking this pawn on e4, which is quite weak. But Black's king is still stuck here, and this is the key thing. Black plays a4, and this is where it really starts to shine. Now, again, when you're trying to attack, clearly if you're going to play such an aggressive opening, what things should you be bearing in mind? Well, you should be bearing in mind you know as soon as you start playing retreating negative moves you're you're probably going to lose any chance you have of being successful you really have to keep that energy level at the same momentum don't drop your energy as soon as you drop your energy uh, and start going backwards you're probably just you're going to lose the initiative you shouldn't be playing aggressive chess if you can't maintain that tempo so here a move like knight d2 would just be totally the, the wrong way to play black develops with check at some point will castle and, and there's nothing going on you're probably going to lose this game so the next move is the best move and let's see if you can play along now I'll, I'll give you some opportunities to pause and see if you can spot the correct move but knight b5 in we go and we're trying to distract the black queen away from f7 now there are a couple of options here for black and black starts to drift at this moment and this is often the case when one side is trying to defend defending is a lot harder than attacking something i keep saying uh, and i really believe in hence why i like attacking 
And here there's a number of options. I mean, check on b6 looks kind of natural because we're checking the king, we're attacking the knight. But there's two options here. After the simple king moves, it's very risky for black to take this piece. Yes, black goes a piece up, but after queen f7 check, king d8, this king is really exposed. And now there's a very strong move here, g6, aiming to bring the bishop in and the rook to d1. Another option after queen b6 is even knight to d4, giving up a piece this way. And this is also a very attractive idea. Um, but the best move here would have been to try and put this queen on a safer square as possible, which defends f7. As we're going to see in the game, queen d7 doesn't work out so well because it opens itself up to attacks on the d-file and to bishop h3. But the move to play would have been queen e7. Now here, it's just a very messy situation. The bishop now can't develop, so black's king is stuck here. But black has pressure against the knight on b3, and it's not entirely clear if white has anything immediate here. So maybe a move like knight d2 in the game simply continues. But in the game, knight queen d7 was played, a rather greedy move. And after this, Valentina keeps playing aggressively. Don't retreat either knights. They're both on pre attack 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 bishop h3 a great diagonal for that bishop and here well queen e7 is simply losing a tempo on the last line after knight d2 this bishop now has really helped white's position it's a much more aggressively placed piece so the queen takes the knight on b5 but allowing queen to f7 check next move force king d8 and this is where maria must have um thought I'm okay because I'm a piece up my queen defends the mate on d7 and if I can play the defensive backwards move knight to d6 I'm going to kick my opponent's queen away and I'm going to plug all my holes I'm going to win because I've got the extra piece so again this is where it comes to a rule I've mentioned before in my videos when you're attacking look at your active pieces queen bishop rook maybe knight can you do anything with those pieces? This is the way I think. If you can't, and I can't see a way to do that, that is stop, that check. My knight doesn't have anywhere good to jump into. My rook could go check, but so what? Knight d6. My opponent has a very good defense against that. My bishop can't do anything. If they can't do anything, then you should look at bringing in reinforcements. Bringing in your pieces which aren't doing anything. So the bishop on c1, the rook on a1 increasing your firepower like a battle scenario if your troops are not doing anything send them in to the danger zone help out their comrades in arms and here the next move is a brilliant move one i've mentioned before g6 not worrying about the knight but continuing to try to attack bishop g5 bringing in reinforcements is a major major threat here so h6 is played can you now see the best move for white and it's a stunning idea here what would you play if you're white here remember you've got to bring in your reinforcements what is the correct way to do that in this position how can you bring in your reinforcements well the best move here and this is a stunning move pause if you need to bishop takes h6 a, a real blow allowing the rook to come in and you can see how this strategy has worked really well we're also asking black the question if you take with a rook you lose control of your bishop if you take with a pawn as happens in the game then g7 is always a concern as is queen to f6 check so now white simply plays rook ad1 check this other piece comes in the next move is pretty much forced knight d knights well knight d6 here um is not working so well because now g7 is one simple way white can play and if bishop takes g7 rook takes d6 and it's checkmate next move so after rook d1 check black tries knight d5 blocking this way but now g7 comes anyway uh bishop takes g7 queen takes g7 and here white is just <laughs> keeps on firing and firing and firing the rook is now threatening to come into d7 
And after pawn takes b3, black figures, well, I might as well keep munching those pieces. Um, yum, 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 yum. And white goes, I don't care. You can have my pieces. I'm coming in. Rook f7. Every white move, an aggressive forwards attacking move. I love the way this game is played. There is a big threat now of rook d7 check when the king will be in a really bad situation. For example, after pawn takes pawn, rook d7 check. Where does the king go? King e8, checkmate on f7. And if king here, then the end must be near here. I haven't actually calculated this, but there's a number of discovered checks here. Which is the best one? This is a good start. Winning another piece, winning the queen. That's good enough to win the game. I'm sure there's a mate there somewhere as well. Uh, but anyway, that's good enough. Maybe you can do the yo-yo. We come back, check here. Come back here, check. And after here... Then we go, oh, is there a finish? Maybe you can do better than me. But it was winning anyway. So in the game, black tries, queen c5, check. And this at least covers some squares. For example, these two. The king comes to h2. And now black is still faced with numerous threats and tries king to e8 because there was a big threat of rook d7. And here... What was the final move of the game? And again, one more move to end a stunning miniature, a 30-move victory for Valentino. Pause this video now if you want to find the courageous and great last move. Well, the last move, again, beautiful tactic. Um, we can see that this rook is some ways, sometimes in the way of the queen, especially in the last position. So rook to f8 does two things it allows the queen access to d7 and it also makes sure a black piece ends up on f8 so that the black king can't run away to that square so after black recaptures that is the end of the game so really really nice game sparkling performance there and um if we have a look at the cross tables very quickly um so i'm just going to set that up so uh, we'll put this here it's at the moment we are some way through the tournament and let me just see if I can add it and we have Valentina at the top of the table with her her fellow uh, Russian player Kostenyuk another fantastic player from Russia and Valentina um, just won her last game so they're both on five points their performance ratings are extremely high over 2700 and I really, I'm impressed with the way Valentina's playing. What a great tournament. What a great lineup of top female players. And this is a great way to encourage more females to the game. And I hope it continues tournaments like this. In my eyes, I love these tournaments, like I mentioned before, because of games like this. You don't see games like this in the elite tournaments. They tend to play more solid. These two players went for it. Respect to both of them, but a sparkling wing there for Valentina. So thank you very much for watching this video. Do like, do subscribe. I'm just going to leave you with a little one minute advert now. So feel free to go away if you don't want to see this advert for the Ginger GM courses, <clears throat> the company I run. Very excited about these. If you want to improve your chess, it's 50% off for a limited amount of time on these courses. I'll put description to them in the chat. Go and check them out. It's a great way to improve your chess. Goodbye for now.